Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is the Creature Mesh Motors overview tutorial, which is a complement to the Bone Motors overview tutorial. If you haven't watched that tutorial, I highly recommend it. Now, before I continue, I want to emphasize again that in Creature, you can deform meshes even with bone motors because everything in Creature, as you all know, is a mesh. It's just that when you actually do mesh deformation with bone motors, you're actually doing bone skinning. That is, you're limited by the movement, the angle, and the translation of the bones. Whereas with mesh motors, you can do much more intricate mesh deformations. All right? So that's the key difference. But again, I want to emphasize that you can already deform everything in Creature with bones. You can deform your meshes with bones, like like so, for example, like this. Oh, sorry, test mode, there you go. <laughs> this is mesh deformation, right? This is basically mesh deformation, and this is mesh deformation with bones, okay? So please remember that you can already do this with bones, except we're gonna cover the mesh motors now. Now, why mesh motors? Well, let me play this animation here. I have a simple animation of a swallow, a bird, trying to do some kind of flapping motion, except there's no flapping motion, right? And that's because the wings here aren't actually deforming. Now, I can deform them with the bones, but they're limited by the translation and the rotation, rotation of the bones, as I just mentioned. So how do we get this to flap? Well, the solution is to use mesh motors, which allows more intricate and complicated mesh deformations to occur. You use mesh motors when you want to perform more advanced, advanced methods of mesh deformation. So what you do is you go to the Regions tab, and you notice when you click on any of these guys, you're selecting the meshes that, that are available to you for deformation. All right? So let's try some simple things. Let's make the wing actually flap. So you click on one of the wings, you click on Install Motor, and you click on the Flap Motor. Now let's play it. Now you can see the wing is actually deforming and sort of flapping now. You can change a couple of attributes, like you can up the speed, Right, And you can also do the same thing with the other wing. If I click on that and I up the speed to say 5, there, there you go. It's a flapping bird. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so this sort of lets me move on to the entire concept, concept of mesh motors. Okay? So as you can see, the difference between mesh motors and bone motors is that we're actually installing a motor that's deforming the vertices directly on the meshes of the character instead of relying on the bones to do bone skinning. And so this allows for some really interesting effects. Now what I did just now was I used the flap motor and it basically shrinks and flaps the mesh like a flapping wing, almost like in 3D. But let's go through a couple of other kinds of motors in the mesh motor list that you might be interested in using. So one of them is the blink motor. This is a funny motor. Now, it's useful for eye blinking. Watch what happens when I install it on the wing. The wing is going to be our test case. All right? So I'm going to remove the other motor first. OK, so we have a blink motor on the wing. And let's play it and see what happens. See how it, it basically flaps or blinks based on some random timing. Now, that's exactly what the blink motor does. Now, I can increase the frequency of it, say, to 100, and in which case it will blink even more. Right? And I can up it to, say, 1,000 to see what happens. See? Now the frequency is a lot higher, so it blinks a lot more frequently. So if I set it back to 100, that makes a blink of frequency 100, which is so it may, might be what you want, depending on how your character is actually blinking. Now this is not a, the best example, because I'm actually applying it to the wing. But you can see how it's useful if you want to apply it to, say, an actual eye object, right? So that's what a blink motor is for. So moving on, we have the cage motor. Now the cage motor has actually been superseded by a more advanced motor, which, I, which it was recently added called the grid motor. We'll get to that in a moment, but it, can, it emphasizes a couple of basic concepts. So if I install the cage motor on it, and it has an extra option called edit motor, for certain motors you have the option of editing it. So click on edit motor, immediately you see this mesh this, sorry, not, not this mesh, but this grid, not a grid, but this over, overlay, this rectangular overlay layout, a cage almost on top of it. Now you can actually drag these nodes around, and that smoothly deforms the mesh. Now, I, I want to emphasize it actually smoothly deforms it. It's not just a, a basic stretching of vertices. No, actually, 
smoothly deforms, deforms it based on a pretty sophisticated weighting algorithm. So you actually get some really, really nice shapes. And of course, you can, you can key these over time. So if I go to, say, frame 10, I can push this back, for example. OK? And so you, you notice I can actually keyframe these over time, which is very useful. right? So if I go back, I can actually see the wing getting deformed with the cage motor, keyframed, of course, right? Okay, so let's remove that. As I said, this has been superseded by the grid motor, but it does em it does emphasize a couple of concepts, which we will revisit later. Okay, the next motor I'm going to cover is the control points motor. So let's install that. So this is a pretty interesting motor. It allows you to do some really interesting kinds of deformations onto your character, I'm sorry, onto your mesh by installing what I call control points. So there are a couple of modes in this. There's the author mode and the animate mode, okay? So if you go to the author mode, the first thing you want to do is you want to add a new node. And you can either switch the mode to add or you can just click, press shift click to add a new node. So let's add, say, two nodes, right? And once you have two nodes, what, what do they actually do? Well, you can size the nodes, and this determines the area of influence of deformation. So I can size these nodes up. Oops, sorry. Like this, like so. All right, let's move it a bit further. OK, so once you're done with these two nodes, you can actually start keyframing and deforming your mesh based off the control points. Now, if I go to animate mode, if I click on that, right, each control point has a couple of transformation modes. You can either translate it. If I translate it, watch what happens. See, that's pretty cool, right? So it actually sort of pulls and molds the mesh like clay. You can, you can translate. You can rotate this. So I can put angles of, say, 20 degrees. And you can see it's actually rotating this mesh around the area of influence. So that's kind of cool. But you can also do scaling. You can actually scale up or scale down this region of influence. So you can make like a beating heart. You see this? And you can also scale it, of course, in one dimension and the other dimension as well. right? So with these controls, it's actually very cool because you can, you can simulate some kind of fake growing 3D effect if you need like a growing heart, a growing object. Similarly, I can do it for here. right? I can do scaling. I can also do translation. And these are, of course, all keyframed over time. So essentially, this is sort of like a sculpting, sculpting mesh control. You put control points over your, your region mesh, and then you keyframe them based on the different deformation transformations that you decide on your region mesh. So that is the control points motor. OK, so moving on, let's remove that. Moving on, the next interesting motor I want to talk about is the grid motor, which is precisely what I was mentioning just now. Now this is the new motor that has superseded the cage motor, and you'll see why, because it's a lot more powerful. So the cage motor it gives, just gives you a boundary. This one gives you an entire grid. And what's really cool is it's designed specifically for keyframing, so you can do group selection, you can move these guys around, and it does really smooth mesh deformation, as you can see. You can move individual points, right? And of course you can keyframe these. So if I move forwards, say like this, I can move these upwards or something, however I want, right? And so you notice it's keyframed, right? So the grid motor is what I highly recommend you to use. You can also change the grid resolution, say to a lower resolution if you want to click create grid, and that will create a new grid with a low resolution. So it's all, you can basically have a mesh a high resolution mesh and then overlay on top of it a grid of any resolution you want and you can animate and keyframe with it by deforming the grid which will deform the mesh in a very smooth sophisticated manner so it gives you some really nice smooth results as, as you can tell here right and of course it's all keyframed so that gives you some really good flexibility in terms of the effects that you want to achieve right so this is how the wing is actually deforming right here OK, moving on, we have the physics motor. I'm going to demonstrate to you what it actually does. Let's actually install it on the body this time. OK, so I'm going to click on Install Motor and I click Physics Motor. Now, watch what happens. <laughs> if I play it, 
oh, it just falls under gravity, which is really bizarre. What is going on? Well, the physics motor is actually doing some sophisticated soft body dynamics on your body itself. Of course, because it's doing soft body dynamics, it's also affected by gravity, of course. Now, I can fix this immediately by clicking on, clicking on edit motor, and I can actually paint the glued regions. And these are regions, uh, these are the vertices, sorry. Painting these glued vertices will actually glue or make the points on the mesh target your animation in a kinematic sense. And then the ones which aren't painted are free to move or wiggle about in a soft body fashion. So if I finish this, if I click finish editing, now if I play it, you notice now it's very, very wobbly, right? Because it's actually doing some soft body dynamics on it. I can obviously remove more points like so and now you notice it's wobbling about so it's very useful if you you want to do some kind of motion with more degrees of freedom than your bend physics you're probably asking what's the point of this if i bend physics well if you want to add an extra wiggle extra jiggle effect on top of your meshes and the wiggle effects have more degrees of freedom compared to your bone motors, I highly recommend using the physics motor. It's actually very useful for any kind of fleshy motion. And of course you can tweak all these parameters. So you can actually make, you can alter the stiffness. You can make it very stiff. You can up the stiffness, for example, just like, just like your bone motors. So now it's, it's stiffer. I can obviously take it down to say 100. So now it's very loose. It's actually very use, useful for cloth as well. I want to emphasize. And you can also up, up the damping. Right. So the physics motor is an alternative to the bend, bend physics motor that you use for bones, except it doesn't actually require any bones, which is kind of cool. So you can literally just select a region mesh and put a physics motor on top of it, and it will actually ha respond with secondary motion, any kind of wobbly motion automatically without you having to put any bones on top of it. So it's an interesting option that you can use. And it's, in certain cases, it can be used to very, very good effect, right? So the best example, again, is the zombie character from OTK Games, if I play it right now. This is a very good example of the physics motor, the mesh deformed physics motor in action. You notice the belly and the back of the the cloth arm, all that stuff, that's all moving with the physics motor. That's actually not bad physics. So you get some really, really, really nice fleshy effects that you achieve very, very easily because it actually applies soft body dynamics to the entire mesh, right? Instead of depending on the bone, the bend physics of the bones to accomplish that effect. So it gives you a much more holistic or global soft body motion, depending on how you actually glue the different parts of the mesh. And, and if we take a look, you notice that the top part of this cloth is actually glued up. Everything else is, is allowed for free motion. So if we play it, you can see how it's actually deforming really, really nicely and very naturally. That's all due to the physics motor, right? So the end effect is quite stunning. Okay, right. Now, moving on to the final motor on the list, at least for the time being, is the simple transform motor. I've already covered this motor before, and this is a very simple motor, actually. It does it does allow you to do some really interesting stuff, however. Where so what it does is essentially it means what it says. You can do simple transform. So I can scale it in a negative direction that basically flips it, mirrors it. I can scale it in the in the, say the y direction that mirrors it in the y, right? So it, it basically allows you to do simple flipping. You can of course also translate it and do other kinds of stuff. You can also change the base pivot so if you, you can you can say where it sort of flips from. I can set it to the center. So it's just now I set it to the incorrect position, but now it actually flips correctly around the center. Right? But you can also do interesting stuff like there was a demonstration I had before where you can use the simple transform motor to do the growing of vines along a chain of bones. So you should look at check out that tutorial as well because that is pretty cool. So you can do some really powerful stuff with the simple transform motor as well. Okay, so that basically concludes this mesh motors overview, and I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, again, you can always deform meshes with bone motors themselves. It's just that mesh motors give you an edit option. They're a bit more powerful, but you have to understand that they also deform the vertices directly. So depending on your application, you can use it or not, 
based on the needs of your character animation. Thanks for watching.